Corona Geeks proudly presents What's the Topic Review, starring Demon Slayer. The following audio may contain coarse language and other materials that may not be for a younger audience. The opinions expressed in this audio are solely those of the speakers of all. These conversations may contain spoilers for current media such as games, comics, movies, television shows, and more. Corona Geeks makes no claim to ownership of various media, simply the opinions expressed. Listener discretion is advised. Be sure to check out the Facebook group, Rone Geeks, where you'll find the majority of our content, memes, and posts, where we have a lot of great discussions about a lot of amazing things. Also, be sure to check out YouTube, which is where I'm sure you'll be watching this beautiful video. See this gorgeous subscribe button? If you aren't subscribed, smash it. You know what to do. If not, hit a like, hit a link, hit the like for this video. Comment anything we missed, anything that you thought was missing from what we had going on. And then be sure to follow us on any of the audio-only content pages provided. Today's topic, Demon Slayer, the world's number two anime currently. We got a 100% on the tomato meter with an 88% on the audience score, which I think was a little low, but we'll get into that when we get to our expert panel. Surprisingly, we're missing David for our anime panel, but for our panel of three today, we have up top Hotaro Haganezuka. Will, welcome back. How you doing, my friend? Eh, I haven't been better, but you know, can't kill me that easy. <laughs> true story, true story. Marines don't go down without a fight. And at, down below us, we have Sam joining the panel as Zenitsu Agatsama. So, we got a very, very good panel today. Plenty of things to talk about. How you doing, Sam? I'm doing well. Happy to have some time to come back, say hi, and try to get back in the mix. And right on this side, on the left and right of Sam, we have both QR codes. Be sure to scan those with your phone. It'll hit you a link tree. It'll take you everywhere you want to go. Hit the like button. Hit the subscribe button. Be sure to ring that notification bell for all of our amazing content that we have going out there. And make sure to keep our audio only with all the listens that can possibly be ahead. We're over 1,000 listens. We're shooting for another 1,000 more in the next two to three months. That's our goal. We're going to hit it, folks. Without any further ado, we have... Demon Slayer, which was a friend suggestion that popped in. I wasn't too keen on it when I saw it initially, but I have to say, I liked it. I'll just give a quick plot and then we'll come in the initial thought. Sorry follows Tanjiro, whose family gets randomly murdered in the middle of the night while Tanjiro is out in the town. Um, the sole survivor is his sister, Nezuko, who gets transformed into a demon by none other than Muzan Kibutsuji, and the leader of the 12 Demon Moons, whose main purpose at this time with her, we have no inclination as to where things are trying to go. Uh, for our first initial thoughts, Sam, hit me with what you thought of the show. Uh, much like you mentioned, I'd, I'd heard about it, and for some reason it just didn't quite jump out and i think it's because a lot of the imagery that i saw i did not know that these were going to be um like basically samurai type characters that these would be you know ronins of some sort that they would all have these swords i you know demon slayer just from the name sounds something different it sounds you know it doesn't sound it doesn't give you the impression it's going to be what it actually is um i like the portrayal of the demons themselves they remind me of a very specific creature, and this was a very good version of that. So, thoroughly enjoyed it. Characters were a lot of fun, a lot of fun, and had a lot of emotion going on. So, I I, I got really invested really quickly. Will, what were your uh, thoughts on this? Because I believe you were the one that referred me to this show as it had slipped through the cracks. Yeah, uh, I actually started watching this like you, you know, uh, you and uh, David had referred uh, Jujutsu Kaisen to me, stuff like that. So I started watching that. Uh, Demon Slayer came up, and my son is the one who actually recommended Demon Slayer to me. Uh, I started watching it, stuff like that, and again, I'm getting very invested. And with the way Demon Slayer portrays his characters and stuff like that, uh, I love the whole tone of the show in terms of. You know how they utilize the characters' motions, how they move in the arcs forward, and stuff like that. Like I love you see the you actually see the characters, you know, move in time where you know 
hair is growing out because he's been there for so long doing what he's doing. Like there's little things that really make it stand out as far as, you know, showing how invested you're going to be in the time frame that things are happening. Uh, I do think that it's a very uh, different style. And so that in terms of uh, comparing it to a lot of other shows so that again, it's, it's rated what number two and stuff. And again, like a lot of people have this problem with comparing animes and stuff like that. Uh, I do believe Demon Slayer kind of stands on its own as far as um, the type of anime it is with bringing all the emotion and investment to it versus other ones that are just like really cool and like lots of good action and stuff like that. This one really, you know, hit home for me, especially with the, the, the main point of the story. Yeah, because like most anime you can... A- either be like oh it's kind of naruto ish or it's got like bleach elements or it's like some got some gundam wing type feels to it this one has nothing this one is just a complete standalone it's very very much by itself in its own category and for me the storytelling was brilliant the villains were compelling everything moved along at a very very steady pace it didn't really have any major dragging points and every single time you started getting invested in a character, there was a payoff for that particular character, so it was very nice to see, and the emotions were very realistic, because if I was a demon slayer and someone like, you know, Nezuko was brought into our ranks, I would be, feel some type of way about it, like, we're supposed to be killing these demons, we're not supposed to be, you know, working on curing them, that's not our main goal, our cure is death, we just do things a little bit differently, so to have that kind of a portrayal of very realistic portrayal of what would happen was nice it was definitely a very very good show i think the audience score should have been like more like a 91 92 88 not bad though it's definitely scoring a lot better than Re- than um masters of the universe revelation scored audience wise but <laughs> sam got into that with jeffrey and david very succinctly on what had transpired with that yeah but without any further ado, Will, what characters kind of stuck out to you? Like, who are your favorites? Uh, the characters that stuck out to me the most and stuff like that, uh, of course, are Nezuko and, by association, Tanjiro. Um, I'm really excited. Even for a character who doesn't have a, a huge speaking role and stuff like that, like, I'm still, you still get her emotions portrayed correctly throughout the animation and throughout the subtle noises and stuff that she makes and stuff like that like you're still feeling with her and with uh, different situations um i think it comes down to the relationship like when you see a lot of these animes and stuff like that like usually i just kind of see, like you got and i'm gonna throw a little bit out here, you know you got goku and and chi chi and stuff like that like they're in a relationship right you got freaking you know gohan and goten you know they have a relationship because they're family I, I actually feel this relationship between tanjiro and nezuko so like that because they're brother and sister he's doing everything he can to help her and so like that and she doesn't want anything to happen to him and you see that throughout the the power of suggestion that was given to her where she now sees all the allies as her family and she takes care of them and throughout everything that she's gone through and so like that she does not stop like she like you have to like physically immobilize her and even then she tries to find out a way on top and so like that so just from her first instance when freaking old boy was about to take out her brother and she punted this dude's head clean off <laughs> she had my full attention like yeah kind of that was definitely a lot of good shock value there because you're like oh yeah this is gonna be kind of a casual hit oh he's gone like i wasn't expecting it to be that solid of a kick but yeah i could not agree more uh sam what characters uh really stuck out to you uh as my name says zenitsu um i like that he to me he's one of the more realistic characters um with most anime in general you know you always have that one character who's super competent super strong super capable and is just they excel at everything and here's a character who gets through he can do the job but he's scared very often um, which to me is a very realistic 
thing if you're fighting demons constantly. I could I could clearly understand how a person would be scared. Um, he's now got this feeling that he's going to die at any moment. So every pretty girl he sees, he's like, hey, love me, marry me. I don't want to die alone. You know, he's got some very, you know, although it's a little over the top and it's humorous, it's deep down, it's very emotionally based. You know, it's rooted in that fear. But when it counts, my man comes through hard. And, you know, it's it's one of those things like he does he doesn't know 10 different forms of his thunder breathing. He knows one. But he does that one better than most people do all of their other ones. And and that's the thing. You know, it was like if even the guy that was training him told him, like, you know, if you can't do anything else, just do this one thing. Perfect. And if he gets to that point where he's about to slice, it's going down. And he's someone that you, you know, you really feel like you can depend on. And despite all his whining and crying, he comes through clutch when it counts. And I, I like a character like that. Uh, yeah, because until Zadito had his payoff, God, was he unbearable to watch. It was just so over the top. It was like, you're realistic, <laughs> but man, chill. No, like, like, you'll be fine. It was, it was irritating. And then he just passed out, and the next thing you know, oh, no, the there it they, is. The way they did it, though, was so smooth. It's just like that. Like he, It's like he disassociative that. personality disorder. Exactly. And it's it's like a protection mode that he goes into because he realized he's like, okay, and now I have to like I have to do this or I'm gonna die. And boom. And he just lights it up. And it's 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 such a great character, you know, and it's like it doesn't really he'll get some other character development, but just that trait to start, and then he kind of wakes up and he doesn't know really what's happened. So it's kind of like I, I just I really like that that concept that when it counts he can do it. I mean the term sleeper agent would probably be the best way of describing <laughs> Sinisu because once he's doubt he's just yes. ready to throw hands with everybody. He's Look, gonna take the, every the spider fight, the spider fight, like that that like that showcases progression. And he's just like, okay, yeah, you're gonna do this one move, and they they and the thing is they drew attention to it. Like he keeps doing the same position. He can only do this one thing. But when he does that thing, he does that six fucking fold. Like, yo, it's it, all bets are off. Like, I know he's got more in the tank, and I can't wait to see what it is. Yeah, cause he had like no business winning that fight, but he won handily in the end once he decided, you know, it was time to get serious, and he got over all his initial human fears that, like Sam said, everyone would have. Not on that yeah. level, maybe, but heck. while injured, while injured, That's true. Yeah. Because for me, my favorite character was Inosuke, and I have such an archetype when it comes to anime characters who are just exceptionally boastful, always believe they're the strongest, and just want to throw hands with literally everybody. Because like Luck from Black Clover, Vegeta from Dragon Ball Z, <laughs> Inosuke just fits the same exact mold where he's just, I'm the strongest there is, I'll be able to kill anybody and anything that I put my mind to. And he's just got natural instincts for doing his job. He may not be the strongest of the group, but no one tell him because in his mind, he is the best. I never understood the whole boar head thing, but like when he took it off, you're like, aren't you supposed to be like horribly, horribly misshapen or just some kind of deformity? But he's just like, no, nah, I just found it annoying. So put the pig head on. Good to go. <laughs> as far as scenes and i know we got into it just a little bit oh also i like Giyu of the main guy that showed up in the very very beginning to help tanjiro with nezuko in the very beginning vouch for him throughout the series definitely love his character he's definitely got some important stuff going on because i feel like it would be fitting if he's with tanjiro when they get to the end of the quest but that's a lot of foreshadowing. That's a lot of guessing and prediction based upon my personal opinion. Um, you talking about Giyu? Giyu, yeah, Giyu. So that's my dude. Really like him. Um, Muzan was a good character too. He plays a very, very believable villain. You can tell he handles no bullshit, period. That is just his thing. So with these demons and, and 
do you get vampire vibes? Everyone gets vampire vibes, I think. I mean, will we agree with that? Like, I mean, they're demons. They're not zombies, obviously, but it's like I've I've not seen another show or another anime that had demons in this fashion. So I, I like the hybrid concept. Um, obviously, you get that. You definitely get that vampire vibe where you have to cut the head off in the sunlight. And I think that was the 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 main thing that kind of focused in and, and made me feel the vampires. And if I had known they had been vampires, I'd have been watching it already. Um, and so... Because Helsing was in your bag, wasn't it? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and so, like, just the fact that these are ultimately vampires. And, of course, I'm very curious. You know, you mentioned Muzin. That's another character that I am intrigued by just because he's the like he's the number one you know he's the main guy like he would essentially be your dracula character if you will just to you know simplify for those who may not be familiar he's the main guy from him all the other demons are spawned from him and so he is i i kind of feel like while he is very much interested in seeing destruction. I feel like he's got another motive just from what we've seen. Because Because, I mean, he got ridiculously sensitive when they were like, you're imperfect, you look sickly. He just snapped, full 180, killed everybody, moved on. You're like, did he, did someone hit a button with this guy? Or it's just, just how he is. He just handles none of that crap. But did you get that vampire vibe too, Will? Yeah, I mean the vampire vibe is there and stuff like that. You just you know you kind of wonder um, where they're going with it because I kind of I don't know why like when he did the whole uh, the neck thing and stuff like that like just the the quick transform yeah just uh, a scrape like that that was enough to for just like okay yeah there, there's so, there's more to him there's a lot more to him and stuff like that and the thing is when we review the shows and stuff like that like I do it without the manga and stuff like that because I know the manga is way more detailed and so there's a lot more stuff going on. But I like the surprise factor. So it's like, I know that there's more going on with this guy. And the fact that he can, you know, flip faces and do other stuff, whatever, like all of that speaks volumes. Like, yeah, that's some some vampire shit. Like, so. for me, he's a less compelling villain than Sukuna is from Jujutsu. But at the same time, he strikes me as far smarter and he's got more compelling stuff to tell because he's got, he's a multifaceted villain, which I'm a sucker for good villains. So having a multifaceted one who's well portrayed, I'm down with that. Well, well, I mean, look at it compared to Jutsu. Like, you know, one of the guys and stuff like that, when they're talking to Sukuna, it's like, yeah, he's got to remind them, like, hey, don't cross me, and stuff like that. Whereas Muzin, like, they say his name, they're scared freaking shitless. And some of them can't even say his name because he put yeah. a spell on them to be like, yeah, uh-uh, you're not talking about this. So it's like, it's, curse it's, is one of those there's a level of fear there, and stuff like that, and a level of respect that comes along with certain things, so it's just like, okay, like where are they going with this? So that I really want to know, but you know, I feel like Masukuna yeah. was like he was gone for a thousand years, kind of. Yeah, he's kind of like freaking oh dormant fear yeah. there, but yeah, I'm getting yeah, off topic yeah. and I'm steering the conversation in the wrong possible direction. As far as scenes go, which scene for you, Sam, really stuck out to you, or had you just kind of going audibly like, wow, that was crazy? Uh, that had to be. And, and it's a very simple one. When Tanjano and Rui fought, that was like, when my man sees that little, like he sees that little thread, the connecting thread, and he goes into his water breathing and he gets ready to do that strike. This time, Nezuko's got, you know, she's like holding the, the threads that Rui's put out and where did the flame come from? Like, I, I was literally sitting there watching this and I was like, okay, he's going to get it. What? Wait a minute. No, because, you know, he, he does water breathing and here's this fire technique. And, and, it's, and it's, of course, you know, I'm sure they'll talk about it more, but it's like, is it a fire technique or a flame technique? Because there was a very distinct difference there. And so, you know, that was one of those things that, of course, it's just like, ooh, so you've got to get more into that. And um, I know that we see the, what is it? The flame Hashira comes in towards the end of the series and whatnot. So of course I'm like, 
I've got to get more information about that. But, you know, it was one of those moments he destroyed him with the power of family. Yeah. <laughs> Damn you, know, you fast and, so, and furious. And so it was like, I mean, he didn't actually win that battle, but it, he did more damage than was expected to be capable. And even Rui was caught off guard like, wait, what? So that was that was perhaps my of the entire series. That was the one scene that like really came in. There was another one. If it doesn't get mentioned out, that'll be my my runner up. Will, what do you got? Uh, well, my favorite scene actually happen, doesn't actually happen. Like, because again, everything is a continuation. So even with Mugen Train, my favorite scene happens there and stuff like that. As part of the series of that, I'm not going to go into detail on it, so like that freaking. So y'all got uh, have to freaking really watch this with that. But um, the flame Hashira and stuff like that, like very important. There's a very clutch moment and stuff like that, and it doesn't happen till the very very end of the movie that really stands out. And it's not even like it's not even him doing anything. It's just the scene itself that really got me. So like that. And when you see it, it, it'll make more sense when you see it. So that, so just trust me, freaking the entire fight, the the entire ending fight that goes down in Mugen Train, so like that, and the scene that occurs directly after it is what does it for me. So basically, Mugen Train will be a continuation video where we just like, hey, we saw this, we have to talk about it. Yeah, oh, we can talk about the movie like in in, in depth. We can talk about the movie. Trust me. Because I mean, it was very very. When I was looking up the ratings for Demon Slayer, the movie kept popping up over the TV show. I'm like, that, that's not how that's supposed to work. Like, the TV show is supposed to be a better movie. Like, Dragon Ball Z, you remember the show, you don't necessarily remember all the movies. For Demon Slayer, it's the exact opposite. The movie's all, for whatever reason, moving trains on top, and I need to figure out why. So I mean, if I, if I can give you something from the show, I'll give you freaking, like, we already talked about Zenitsu Sixfold. and stuff like that. that. I'll give it that, and stuff like that, because that was clutch. Last minute, and he's like, "I'm going to die anyway," and he's like, "Fuck it, like I'm going out like a fucking boss." So, yeah, yeah. Because for me, the scene that really stuck out to me wasn't even like necessarily a fight scene. It was when the twelve Hashira were having their little group discussion about their next plan of attack, and just seeing how each one of them had their own unique personalities and something that they brought to the fold. And, like, they had their own backstories sort of fleshed out a little bit. Some of them were still very, very vague. But seeing how they interacted with each other and how Tanjiro and Nezuko interacted with them, I thought was very, very curious and was very telling. And uh, Gyu was very much just a stoic figure who was almost a voice of reason, which was the exact opposite of, like, how he's portrayed by the... The female Hashira, whose name escapes me at the time, um, she was talking. Flower? Yeah, the, the one with the flower, Hashira. the flower Hashira, who's talking hella smack to uh, Giyu the entire time. She was funny. She was a very likable character. I just forgot to get down her name, but her reaction with Giyu I thought was a uh, really nice. Um, anything with the Nosuke is also like a apart for me. Like when he was fighting with Father. And then he finally realized it was like, I might not be strong enough for this. It was definitely hilarious because it's the exact opposite of what his character is. He's the, I'm just gonna, he's the ultimate tank. He just, all right, bad guy over there, go take care of it. And usually he's able to, but Father was one of those demons that just, at the time, was above Inosuke's skill level. So that was definitely a uh, interesting take on everything. As far as the series goes from top to bottom, how would you rate what you saw, 10 being the highest, 1 obviously being the lowest? What are your thoughts, Sam? Um, Demon Slayer definitely comes in very solid, uh, 8, 8.5, no question. The only reason I can't necessarily rate it higher is... Did you haven't seen Mugen Train. <laughs> <laughs> Probably because I haven't seen Mugen Train. Um, uh, there's it's an anime and with the amount of action that's in the anime like the action and the emotion it still has its moments where it's just silly and in some cases it's okay to kind of lighten the mood and I, and I get that but at other times it seems like it's you know I, I guess maybe it's a cultural thing and I don't always understand exactly 
why we're doing this part. Um, but there's a lot of times where I find I'm, I'm easily able to get out of it by what's going on. Um, you know, everybody has like the, the special, like they have a very distinctive skill. Um, they can smell, they can hear, uh, you know, being able to sense what's around by touching the ground, things like that. And so there's a scene where Tanjiro and his sister are going to get some ramen or something. And he goes up to this one little restaurant to get some ramen. And then he smells, he can tell that there's a demon nearby because he can smell it. And so that whole segment takes place. But then when he comes back, like the conversation he's having with the the guy at the noodle shop, Udon. it was like, that didn't even, like, what? And that was one of those moments where I was like, oh, let me go and get something to drink right now because this is obviously not important. And, you know, it's like they don't really do filler episodes per se. They just put filler in the middle of the show. So it keeps it moving really nicely. Like you said, it doesn't, like, you, you, you can stay invested overall, but it just has those moments where it, it just kind of wanes and gets off topic. And then they come back and they pull me back in. So I just run to get my drink and come back and everything's good again. So minor complaint, nothing to make it sound like, oh, don't watch it. It gets off. No, not, not like that. It's just the only reason I can't give it like a perfect score. It's mm-hmm. like for me, I would give it a nine. And I, I forgot to highlight another scene I really liked. I like the scene with Muzan when he had the six lower moons all gathered. And he's basically like, I don't need you guys anymore. I'm going to kind of call an audible here. We're going to go with the higher moons. You guys don't mean crap to me. He kills four of them before they even get off the jump. One takes off, which he easily captures, kills, and and then he just has the one who's like, yeah, fuck it. Do it. Kill me. I don't care. This is fine. And then Muzan decides to show mercy, give extra blood to that lower moon, and that set up Mujin train from my understanding of things and, and to that point it was very interesting because it wasn't just that that one was like you know i don't care i'm guessing if, if it's appropriate i want to say that one was a she and she was saying it would be an honor to be killed by you i live for this destruction thank you the torment would be great please and he's like okay you're a sick puppy I like you. <laughs> and that was why he went ahead and gave her the extra blood. It was like, now I need you to do something for me. There's a kid with some fan earrings. Go handle that light work. And the fact that he won't like Muzin is the one who caused Nezuko to be in the state she's in. And yet why isn't he addressing like, why did he just handle Tanjiro when he passed by him? Like, something there i need to know more there's probably a lot going on there but i give it a nine the plot was good the action was good there was good development it didn't get too slow there was filler at some points but for me it wasn't like unbearably bad it wasn't like dragon ball where you can get like six or seven episodes of filler before you get something actually happening or like naruto where it's just flashback after flashback after flashback and next (laughs) you know you're within a flashback within another flashback and you're just like please just kill each other somebody do something but it was a nine for me. I really liked the series. It, it would easily fit within one of my top ten animes if I had to make a list. It would it would be in there somewhere. It's a very good series. I'm very happy that Will recommended it. So thank you for that. Without further ado, your rating without Mujin Train, which we'll come back to and make a whole separate entity on gag review. All right. Um, well, the Mujin Train, uh, the lower one of that episode, uh, that he... It's a he, from what I remember. So right, that uh, very, I mean, he kind of got the no scale like the feminine uh, face and stuff like that. Uh, the way it was drawn, stuff like that. But again, you can't ever really tell with anime. So, All right, but from what I know, it's a he. Um, if I were just to rate it off of where it stands, stuff like that, the fact that they slow, they did a steady increase. Like you, you see, there's throughout the entire show, like there's learning. It's not just oh, freaking. I'm going to train for a little montage and stuff like that, and now I can reach, you know, this level, this level, like, no, like, throughout the whole thing, like, it's a consistent training, I gotta get better, I fucked up, I gotta fix this, so on and so forth, like, mistakes are being made and stuff like that, and the characters are learning and evolving, I love that shit, so like that, the rating I'll give the show, let's say, over so that is, is definitely freaking, you know, nine, for me, it's with that without a doubt. It's with that. Um, 
I do think because they have such good potential to keep going and do more and stuff like that. Like again, with how the the manga supposedly goes with that, how many issues are in the manga so like that, we definitely see that this can go on for you know uh, a couple seasons. It's not going like Naruto length, not like that. But I think you can get a good you know five seasons. Th- I say a good anywhere from three to five seasons out of this, depending on how you stretch it and what extra stuff you add to it with that. But I think it's a good series, and I think it's a good series if they keep it uh, short and not not stretch it out and stuff like that. The longer the longer they stretch it out, if it gets past a certain point, it's going to start to drag and stuff like that, and it's going to be a problem because we've already got introduction to the big bad. Could there be another big bad above that one? It's possible. I, I won't I won't shy it off and stuff like that. But the fact that we've got the 12 keys of key and stuff like that, and you know, you got apparently six, like six more badasses before you really get to him and stuff like that. I think it's five. Because no, he fought a lower moon. You're right. There are six more. Yeah. Yeah. So the lower moon is like that freaking so for y'all seven, because y'all haven't seen movie train, but uh there's seven freaking to get to you know, get through and figure it out. Like if they just keep the same art and it basically they just get through these and get to freaking you know final boss mode and freaking we just kind of go in from there and they they ended really well like again i'm not freaking whether they ended on a happy note or they ended on a freaking sad note for whatever like and just like they ended there i think it'll be freaking fantastic and i think this will stay or not but everything's subject to change based off of what they do solidly reviewed uh, TV series. I could not be happy with what the anime has done. We'll come back once Mushin Train has been watched. We'll give this panel uh, another go around. We'll try and get our god of all things anime, David, another ring. See if he's able to hop on because all things anime, he is usually the man. He's usually the one giving us the homework of, hey, go watch this because that's how we ended up with Psycho Pass, God of High School. Surprisingly, it was not Jujutsu Kaisen from him, even though he is already way ahead in the manga than I am. I'm starting to catch up with everything there. But be sure to scan your phone over the QR codes, as I feel we've done a pretty succinct job of wrapping up everything we need to. I've been Brett, your host. We have Sam joining us at the bottom here. Happy to have him on. We got Will, man the myth the marble, up the top. Thank you for your time. Happy to have you back after your uh, injury. And as Tony would say on... All things grown a geeks.